Hello. So this is a response to the Dr. K video where he talks with um, ferociously Steph. Um, a, among other things, they talk about gender identity and how that relates to Dr. K's Eastern philosophical perspectives um, on the concept of identity and self. And I thought that Steph did great in that interview, but she wasn't really prepared to answer some of the questions that Dr. K was asking. And I let to take a try at answering those questions myself in this video. Um, so I have some notes prepared here on my phone, so I'll be reading from that. Um, the potential conflict that I see that Dr. K continuously raises during the second half of this interview is essentially this conflict between uh, the perspective of his Eastern thought and uh, monk training that says that identity should not be falsified, constructed through feelings and appearances. And identity is much deeper than those thoughts and feelings and comes directly from the humanness of the inner self, the true self. Um, and that's contrasting with the perspective of gender identity and the modern discourse around that, which states that, and paraphrasing from like the, the way these ideas were presented in Dr. K's video, but um, on the other side is this idea that if you have a strong negative feeling about appearing as one gender, which would be like gender dysphoria, and a strong positive feeling around appearing as another, you should accept those feelings as transgender identity and transition. Yeah, so that seems to be the central conflict that Dr. K is struggling with in this interview, and I'd like to provide my perspective on it. Um, so I've broken this down into a few points that he makes throughout the video. The first point that I'd like to address is Dr. K talking about uh, how identity is false and there is an, an innate humanity of the self that really forms your true identity. Like, it would be wrong within a Buddhist tradition to even really claim that you're a man or a woman because you're simply you, you're simply human. Uh, again, in Dr. K's uh, point that he's making, he's saying that feelings should not determine identity and feelings don't define you as a human being. And this is in the context of Steph in the video saying that she feels good to be, to present as a woman, essentially. Um, so my response to this point from Dr. K is that I totally agree that identity is false. You know, I'm on board with that uh, dharmic philosophical idea uh, that like this constructed identity of like feelings and uh, thoughts, like the ego, essentially, that's kind of false in the sense that it, it's an appearance, but it's not, you know, your true inner self. Um, but your identity only exists within the world of appearances. And so gender identity, likewise, does also not exist within the innermost self. It exists within the ego, within the identity of uh, the world of appearances. However, importantly, it is real within the world of appearances. It is real in the material world and the way that we interact with people. And it has real consequences on our lives. Additionally, I'd like to say that identity has multiple layers. So there's things about my personality and my character defined by what I think and feel. And those things are there, but there's also gender, like the, the social context through which all of your behaviors and actions are perceived by another person in society. And th that constant filtering of perception, and it's even how you perceive yourself too, it filters the way you perceive yourself. So even if you have, you know, a deeper sense of identity that's not built around gender, like gender is always there to color how you see yourself and how others see you. And so gender dysphoria is the feeling of that not working for you, that ever-present social context of your gender not feeling good for you, feeling explicitly uncomfortable. Like how Dr. K kept saying, 
Um, the way he understands a transgender perspective is imagining wearing very feminine clothes, a dress and high heels, and how he would feel uncomfortable with that. So yeah, that's, that's a decent comparison. For a transgender person, your dysphoria is like wearing that high heels and dress all the time, feeling uncomfortable, feeling explicitly uncomfortable with those social roles that you have been placed in and feeling that all the time through every social interaction and even through the way you see yourself. That's dysphoria. Additionally, dysphoria is the feeling that the tr truer, deeper, more authentic layers of your personality could never be fully and meaningfully expressed through the social context of your assigned gender and feeling somewhat hopeless because you are restricted in that way. So another point that Dr. K makes in this video is how suffering can come from chasing external desires, such as being in a different body. Like if you are um, suffering over your, you know, your perception of your weight, like if you develop an eating disorder for that, or like if you get really obsessed about facial structure, like incels or something, I'm referencing that ContraPoints video now, but like if you wanted your nose to be smaller or something, and you really hated your nose and you really wanted to get a nose job and you're suffering because you're so attached to this external desire of getting a nose job or keeping your weight as low as possible. Um, and so, yeah, that does cause suffering. And so the idea is like, how does that integrate with the idea of trans identity and wanting to transition and being comfortable with your body versus n knowing that you want physically to look differently, desiring that external physical change and wanting to transition. How can you balance those two things? So that is actually a really important balance for trans people to find, in my opinion. And Dr. Pay Dr. K makes a good point when he says, it's fine to exercise, you know, as long as you're not obsessing and suffering over your weight and body, but it is fine to exercise and it's fine to engage in trying to make your body better for you and more healthy for you and that's exactly the same way with transitioning like when you transition it's very generally a very healthy thing to do because it improves your mental health and improves the way you interact with the world and improves your motivation and your investment in your body you can learn to love your body through transitioning and through accepting trans identity and that leads you to take care of it and it ends up being very healthy in that way so that's a really important balance to strike where you want to holistically love your body just as it is but at the same time look towards what phys recognizing what physical changes we could make that would meaningfully help us in the issue of relating to other people and ourselves in society and making informed decisions about whether those choices are the right choice for us about whether those changes are the right choice for us. So another point that Dr. K makes kind of as a uh, inverse of the last point is that you also shouldn't let your, in the same way that you shouldn't let your identity be defined by chasing external desires and suffering from that, you also shouldn't let your identity be defined by chasing good feelings and letting those positive feelings, those positive emotional feelings of happiness define your identity. In general, you shouldn't build your identity around like surface level feelings in the mind. Um, and so my objection to that is that I'm, I'm not sure if it was in this video, but at some point I've definitely heard Dr. K talk about actually several times. He's talked about like emotional happiness versus like an existential contentedness, like peace and detachment versus emotional positive or negative feelings of pleasure or pain. And so ultimately gender dysphoria is a kind of existential unhappiness, which generates a lot of emotional unhappiness. You know, you're fundamentally discontent with your place in society and your, the way that you relate to yourself and with other people. And that's fundamentally bringing you a lot of suffering. And so it generates a lot of um, emotional unhappiness too, when you are reminded of how you don't interact with yourself and others in the way that you would like to, when you see physical traits on your body that remind you of that, or hear your voice, or have an interaction where somebody misgenders you or something like that, like those all remind you of this 
deep existential unhappiness that you have with yourself and it makes you emotionally unhappy within your mind. And so gender euphoria is at the inverse where if you are being recognized in the way that you feel is authentic to yourself, it's your preferred gender, and you look the way that you want to look and you're being treated the way that you want to be treated, then you have this sort of internal peace where you feel like you're not all discordant with the world and like you, you're not so disconnected from the world. You can actually authentically interact with it. And that is a lot of peace compared to the suffering that you experienced before transition. And so that brings a lot of emotional happiness when you recognize that happening. Like the first time a trans person, like a trans woman puts on a dress and looks at herself in the mirror, then she can see that like, this is how I resolve that discontent and that suffering deep within myself and at an emotional level that makes you feel really happy. So that's about all I have for my response to Dr. K's interview with Ferociously Steph. Um, I think I'm going to post this on the Dr. K subreddit and Discord, so if anybody is watching from there, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like discussions about like philosophy and uh, Eastern religion, Hinduism, Buddhism, I'm trying to make some videos about that stuff on my channel. So um, yeah, if you like this video, check out some others on my channel, basically. Thank you for watching. Bye.